ladies and gentlemen, in today's video we're going to be talking about tips and tricks on how to heal the hard bosses during season 1 of The War Within. Before we start, a little selfish self-promotion. If you want to support the channel and the content creation, please check the links below for my Patreon page and the YouTube memberships. That would be much appreciated. Now let's dive straight in. The biggest trick for Isu the Grand Splicer, the last boss in City of Threads, is basically to stack on your tank. You want to move as a group, which is going to make sure that you always know where the orbs are and what direction they're coming from. If you spread, even if the blue circles are not on top of you, a orb could zoom through the whole map and still hit you, which is not going to happen if you're stuck and they're all behind you. The strat also makes sure that you're all stacked when the roots come out and it's easier to cleave them. And I guess the only thing to be aware of is watch when the tank buster comes and run backwards when the big circle comes, not forward where the tank is going to go, or you might die. The last thing to mention here, when you get the stomp, make sure everybody is topped up because that thing hits pretty hard and it comes after the AoE splice mechanic. And that's probably the best point to use your defensives as well. The hardest boss for Pugs this season is no doubt fully Kikatao, the last boss in Arakara. One big tip here is if you have poisoned the spell, do not use it unless you're absolutely sure that you're not going to kill someone with the poison waves. That's particularly dangerous, let's say if your whole melee is stacked on top of each other and you drop your poison cleansing totem, you're going to kill them all. So try to brute force heal through the dot and only dispel if you know you're safe and if you end up dispelling, don't do it while you're moving because you can run on top of your own wave. The next tip here is for the ads that root you, you can interrupt them to break the root, sorry priests, but you can also use almost any kind of CC abilities, knocks up, stuns, fears, pushbacks, which can also affect nearby members as well. And lastly, if you're not rooted and the sucking starts, you can use abilities like Gust of Wind, Transcendence, Warlock Portals, which could be a little bit tricky to time, but you might have to do that if, let's say, you have a DK who actually grips all the ads that root you and tries to kill everyone. So giving a heads up to people like that before you pull is also a good strategy. Quick tip on the third boss in Siege of Boralis, Hadal Dark Fatum. You can actually jump on top of the fountain in the middle to dodge the waves that come from the sides. I find that quite useful sometimes. Other than that, try to bait the swirlies away from the center. Keep in mind that you have plenty of time to heal up the people that get damage after them. And then stay away from the sides when the waves are about to come so you don't get one-shotted when they spawn. For the last boss in Siege of Boralis, you want to dispel one of the targets as soon as the debuffs come around, but you also want to stay spread because the dispel does a knockback in a small circle around the target. If the first dispel goes on the tank or on yourself and you know you have a defensive or somebody else who has a defensive, you can leave it on them and dispel the other target first. Assuming that you don't have a second dispel, you want to spam heal and use externals on the second target until your dispel comes back and you can get rid of the second debuff as well. Be very careful with your positioning when you're moving between platforms because first you can get the spells at that point and second if you fall into the water there's a shark that's going to eat you if you stay there for too long. And last but not least, there are a couple of places where the swirlies do not hit. On the second platform, that's a little hill at the very back of the platform. And on the third, that would be the stairs of the ship in the middle. However, be careful if you use them. Of course, you have to be ranged. But if you have way too many ranged players and they get the debuff and you start the spelling and you're stacked on top of each other, that's not gonna end well. Stitch Flash is the third boss in Necrotic Wake, it's getting some nerves but also you won't be able to stack spears on it anymore, so it's one of the harder encounters. First, always be ready to get the hook. Don't be stuck at the other end of the room so that comes as a surprise to you. And once the boss is down, you want to position it between yourself and the Abomination. This is going to make sure that the next hook is going to get him when he does the fixate, and it's also going to make sure that he's walking in that line if you're the one who's fixated. 
After you do that mechanic, you should be ready for the next hook and aim it towards the stage to get him back down with the same abomination, supposedly before it dies, so you don't have to wait for the next one. When it comes to healing, do not overcommit cooldowns because the damage is pretty even throughout the whole fight. If you stack way too many cooldowns, you have big windows where you have nothing to press, which is quite bad. And keep in mind that you can take the weapon shields which are spread throughout the dungeon and use them here to reduce the damage that your party takes, which is probably one of the best usages that you can have for them. Draga is the third boss in Green Bateau and one of the main mechanics are three curses that go off to players and slow them down, putting healing absorb on them. Now, of course, you can brute force heal through them, but if you have a curse dispel or you have something that removes slows like Blessing of Freedom, you can get rid of the curses without the need to heal through them. That's gonna make the fight much more easier and the other big tip is stack on top of each other on, or on your tank when she's about to do the pushback so you can stack the tornadoes at one place and move to the next location in the platform. Stacking close to the walls is also going to decrease your flying time and increase your uptime, so take advantage of that to make sure you're also not knocked back in the abyss. Aerodax is the last boss in Green Bateau and the obvious tip here is once he casts the big AoE, try to look around and see where the circle is going to collapse, trying to pre-move to the middle, of course without hitting any tentacles on the way. After that, when he's about to summon the small adds, try to run to your tank so it's easy for them to get aggro, and the next step does not depend on you as a healer, but try to stagger killing those adds because they give you a debuff that increases the shadow damage that you're taking and his next shadow gale is going to be exactly shadow damage. So ideally you want to cleave down the adds but do not kill them until the shadow gale damage is over and then once the AoE is done, finish them down and continue the fight. This would be a good place to use defensives as well, especially if you get some stacks before the AoE starts. Survive that part and everything else is rinse and repeat. Edna is the first boss in Stone Vault and there are a few tricks that you can utilize here. First, do not break all the spikes all at once unless you're prepared and you have defenses for that. On lower keys, tanks are actually body soaking a spike so you have one less remaining to break when the beams come out. And then Seismic Smash is the tank buster that leaves a debuff on your tank. Do not dispel it until the next one comes up. The dispel gives the tank a huge defensive boost but it only lasts 6 seconds, so you want to dispel him once the boss starts to cast the next tank buster, which will remove the possibility of your tank getting one-shotted. The next boss in Stone Vault is called Skarmorak, and the biggest tip here is again not dependent on you, but on the DPS. You have to stagger killing the crystals, because they put a 3 seconds dot on everyone that stacks. That, of course, is kind of hard to coordinate in a pug, but if you kill all three crystals at the same time, you're most certainly going to wipe. Marking the current one with a skull usually helps and hopefully your teammates wait 3 seconds before they attack and start killing the next skull. The other big tip here is soak the black orbs. As a healer, you get 50% increased healing per orb, so you should soak at least two and then leave the remaining ones for your DPS as they increase the damage they do to the shield as well. Keep in mind that the orbs do put a small dot on you, but doing 100% increased healing should be no problem to deal with. One of the hardest bosses is definitely the Master Machinist, and there are some spots in the room where you can stand the whole time and not worry about the frontos, but they're a bit tricky to get to, and also you still have to move because of the frontal. So apart from that, the biggest trick that you can do here is make sure you have a ranged interrupt for when the caster guy jumps away. If you're not ranged, you should pre-assign who is responsible for the ranged interrupt because if that goes off, it puts a dot on you which then overlaps with the next big mechanic, making it that much harder to heal through. The rest of the interrupt should be handled by your tank and the melee, so nothing to worry about there. And as long as you run on top of the vent that is not firing up, and you kill the bosses at the same time, you should have no problem with this encounter. Hopefully you managed to learn something new from this video and you have more tips for this or some of the other bosses, do let me know in the comments below. 
I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Now get out of here.